Many countries and energy companies have established aggressive decarbonization goals for the coming decades. Meeting these targets will be challenging, if not unreachable, without transitioning hard to decarbonize sectors like heavy duty transport. Transportation contributes nearly one quarter of the annual energy related carbon dioxide emissions. Heavy duty transport, like long haul trucking, shipping, aviation, and rail, accounts for half of those emissions. Fundamental and practical limits of energy to weight ratios makes heavy duty transport one of the most difficult sectors to decarbonize. Commercial marine shipping conveys 90% of global trade, consuming the equivalent of 3 million barrels of oil daily. Drop in zero carbon fuel substitutes represent one of the few options proposed for eliminating this carbon footprint. Hydrogen-based fuels produced by carbon neutral means stand out as a leading path to zero carbon fuel for the world's largest ships. Ammonia is one leading candidate for meeting this need. Several companies have already begun the process of piloting this conversion, with multiple ammonia-ready engines slated for the near future. Ammonia is already produced at scale as a global commodity for the fertilizer industry. Transition of commercial shipping to ammonia fuel offers a $140 billion annual market opportunity, requiring an additional 200% capacity to meet this demand. Where would the carbon-free energy come from to produce ammonia and other zero-carbon fuels at the volume and time they're needed? Viable options include advanced nuclear energy sources, offering inherent safety and the benefits of high temperature operation. In a recent study, EPRI asked how nuclear could be deployed at the scale needed for decarbonization by 2050. One compelling approach was found in two of the very same industries that challenge decarbonization goals, shipping and petroleum production. Commercial shipyards already apply modular construction and assembly in fully engineered environments for efficient fabrication of the world's largest ships on predictable schedules. Additionally, offshore petroleum production has begun shifting to ship-based processing and refining using large floating production, storage, and offloading platforms, or FPSOs for short. Application of this combined shipyard FPSO model could bring down nuclear costs and timelines and increase deployment rates to meet aggressive decarbonization targets. Of the four scenarios examined by EPRI, three employ the shipyard FPSO deployment model. Returning to the shipping sector, large-scale nearshore production of ammonia at ports offers on-site production of a zero-carbon marine fuel substitute. The model can be extended to other carbon and energy intensive industries as well, like the production of synthetic aviation fuel as a drop-in substitute for fossil fuels in air travel. Adaptation of the model can also provide growing population centers along coastlines with a clean, reliable, affordable source of electricity, drinking water, and synthetic fuel. Pool from these markets could be strong enough to drive transformational change in the competitiveness of nuclear, as well as in the production of liquid fuels, to enable deep decarbonization of energy infrastructures. Our techno-economic assessment of these deployment models suggests that the prices for all of these commodities can be competitive with existing production. Positioning nuclear energy as the backbone of this decarbonization effort accesses new markets and improves the fabrication capabilities of advanced reactors for more traditional missions. This opportunity is why EPRI is rethinking nuclear deployment scenarios.